And Roland, you know, a lot of people are asking about the president's press conference, the fact that he may not have seemed to get it. I hear Nancy Pelosi saying yesterday, well, our biggest problem wasn't our message, it was our turnout. Wrong. They left the guy that masterminded the greatest turnout yeah. of Democratic the voters in 2008 and 2012 on the sidelines. The president's got to be sitting there going, you got to be kidding myself, my no, fellow Democrats. Maybe that's why he wasn't so upset the other day in his press conference, because mm -hmm. Democrats said they didn't want him around. No, Democrats did that, but also he also failed there. Look, here's the real deal here. I remember when Teddy Atlas, when Michael Moore fought Evander Holyfield, Atlas sat on the bench and said, man, do you want this? Do you want to fight? And the reality is they didn't want to fight. When I interviewed the first lady, and she was talking about the economy and talking about jobs coming back, and that was a t Remember when we came in the office losing 500,000 jobs a month? I visualized that Chrysler Detroit commercial saying Detroit is back. And, mm -hmm. I, and I was sitting there visualizing uh, black and white video of losing jobs and homes being foreclosed on and jobs and uh, companies shutting down and then color video of jobs coming back, uh, energy, uh, gas production being up. And I'm saying, wait a minute, why did I not see that commercial? Mm -hmm. Why did I not see that? Why didn't you That's create the narrative? Question. But the other thing is this here. The president has to own up to the fact that he created this competing infrastructure, Organizing for America and the Democratic National Committee. The Democrats' problem is they don't have a 50-state strategy. They had no infrastructure in a lot of those states for 2012, and they didn't create it in the last two years. And mm -hmm. so this is a party that had no clue when it came to message, and they also didn't fight. The president, you should be going to those 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 those, those poor health care states and talking to those largely white voters and saying, you know what, I passed the Affordable Care Act for you because the health care in Mississippi and Alabama and Tennessee and Arkansas is horrible. So mm -hmm. the people who you keep supporting, they say they're against me on this when this bill is for you. But, and I've said to senior White House officials and even to the president, I don't understand why he is unwilling to throw the punches. Guess what, Mr. President, you got two years left. You right. want to you have a legacy? Fight. So, uh, first of all, and I think the president and his wife could have had an impact there. But, Joe, I guess this is going to sound incredibly naive, um, but you call it opening arguments. I just don't understand why Mitch McConnell and John Boehner couldn't wipe the slate clean. I don't know why the base needs to hear what they heard yesterday in terms of playing with matches, you're going to get burned, or, you know, we're going to repeal Obamacare, and that's where we're starting this. What about, you know, it's been a rough ride. We're in power now. Our uh, hold on. And... You know, quite frankly, we want to make it work. There's some things we want to get done. There's some things the president wants to get done. And we commit to working together with the president. We are going to reach out and we are going to try and make this work and get Washington working again. Why couldn't that have been the opening argument? I don't understand why there has to be this jerk tone. I'm serious. They just all sound like jerks. Am I wrong? Well, because, yeah, yeah, you are. Why? Um, you are, and, I, I, and it, it hurts me to say that, Mickey. First of all, amen to everything Roland said. The message is very simple. Hey, guess what? Unemployment's down below 6%. Gas prices are down to, to, to the lowest level in years. Health care insurance, our health care costing us less than it has in, you know, half a century. A lot of great things to say there. But on, to your point, there are a lot of times, Mika, where you will go into court and you will hear the prosecutor say in front of the jury, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, the defendant's a murderer. And behind the <laughs> scenes, five minutes before, he said, okay, I'll tell you what, my evidence is kind of sketchy. I'll give him five years probation. And that's the way it works.